Mount is a lovely holiday destination in the southern part of India. It beckons you with its natural beauty and quiet old world charm. Known for its miles and miles of coffee plantations, a stay in the heart of the plantations, close to nature, was indeed refreshing and rejuvenating. The discovery of wild orchids growing freely all over the plantations and countryside made the visit extra special for me. Watch the full video to learn about this delightful experience. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Anupama from Mumbai in India. An orchid hobbyist and a blogger, I write on orchid culture and care. You can check out my blog with the link provided in the description. I love traveling to places rich in natural biodiversity. While this video is about my visit to Kurg, I must begin by telling you about where it all began. My first trip of this kind was a visit to Sikkim in the northeastern Himalayan region of India. It gave me a first-hand experience of seeing orchids thrive in their natural habitat. The highlight of the trip was seeing the Silagini Nitida in full bloom. To know more about this visit, you can read my blog post on the same. I will leave behind a link in the description. Coming to my recent visit to Kurg, it was equally exciting. I could absorb the beauty of its rich natural biodiversity, which is nurtured by the river Kaveri and several large lakes in the region. The lush greenery of the wild forests and coffee plantations, along with the cloud-covered peaks on the horizon, make for a picturesque landscape. But what took my trip to the next level was seeing native orchids growing on trees on the coffee plantations. As an orchid hobbyist and enthusiast, my joy knew no bounds in watching them closely, growing undisturbed all along the countryside. The climate of Kurg is pleasantly cool with plenty of rainfall which feeds the rivers and lakes in the region. The terrain is hilly and the fertile land is ideal for the cultivation of coffee and spices such as pepper. I also came upon a mulberry tree that had berries 2 to 3 inches long and were lip smacking delicious. Bitter sweet oranges are also grown in Kurg, which are used for preparing marmalade and to add tang to the native dishes. Offering a blend of a rich historical past, verdant landscapes, friendly people and a delicious cuisine, Kurg had been on my list since many years and so a family trip and stay on the coffee plantations was just what I needed to recharge my batteries. On arrival, we stayed in a villa style bungalow that had an old world charm and elegance to it. Its Victorian decor was thoughtfully preserved and suitably embellished with modern amenities that blended perfectly with its rich interiors. Built in 1890, it gave us a peek into life in the early 1900s that was marked by colonialism. The pictures lining the hallways, the grandfather clock and chandeliers hanging from the wood panelled ceiling, the large dining table, the king sized double bed and large bedrooms as well as the brass fittings in the bathroom completed the period feel of the accommodation. To add to the feel, it also had a quaint old style bicycle with one very small wheel which was a challenge to balance since the two wheels were not connected by a chain. So balancing the wobbly wheels was a tricky proposition. My son finally managed to ride it, albeit it being a shaky experience. I had never been on a coffee plantation before and so I was excited to get a closer look during my morning walk. The robust dark green leaves with green berries growing in bunches all along the stem was indeed a beautiful sight. The berries ripen to a deep red and then they are ready to be harvested. I was fortunate enough to spot some bushes that had coffee blossoms on them. The blooms look like beautiful bunches of jasmine growing on a bush. We enjoyed sipping coffee made from the beans grown on the plantation. It was fresh, aromatic and rich in flavour. Interspersed between the coffee bushes were pepper vines climbing on tall trees that protect the coffee plants 
from strong direct sunlight. The wines were laden with bunches of peppercorns that looked amazingly beautiful. A lot of the dishes we ate were spiced up with the peppercorns grown on the plantation. Besides these experiences, the wild orchids growing in the region looked healthy and beautiful in their own way. They are native to the Western Ghats. Most of them looked like foxtail orchids, that is the Rhynchostylus retusa, Dendrobium, Silagini, Bulbophyllum, and other species. I had the opportunity to film some of them up close, but most of them were not in bloom. I found only one orchid blooming and have pictures of the same. It looks like a Bulbophyllum species, but have not been able to identify it. I would definitely appreciate it if any of you can identify it. Please leave a comment. It would be immensely helpful. Thank you. As an orchid grower, I always find myself trying to provide grow conditions similar to those which, which grow in the wild. So every opportunity I get, I study their habitat. This time it was no different. I notice that orchids do not grow on trees with thick foliage. They grow on trees that allow a good amount of diffused light to stream in on them. While they do not like sun exposure throughout the day, orchids grow in places that get a decent amount of diffused light for a period of 3 to 4 hours every day. Wild orchid blooms are generally small and may not be as impressive as their hybrid counterparts but they have their own place under the sun and add to the rich biodiversity of the region. Clearing up of forests for urban development and infrastructure projects has impacted the growth and proliferation of these orchids. Efforts need to be put in to educate the public at large and ensure these species are protected by the native people. Moreover, as people gain awareness of orchids, it also becomes important to prevent them from collecting wild orchid species and selling them. This is already a menace in some of the northeastern Himalayan states of India, leading to their disappearance from these regions. As a conscientious orchid hobbyist, I always believe in buying orchids from plant nurseries and advocate the same to my fellow hobbyists. We need to conserve wild orchids so that their blooms can be enjoyed by our future generations. It is a legacy that needs to be passed down from one generation to the next. But Kurg has more to it than its verdant hills, whales, water bodies and orchids. Adding to the rich biodiversity of the region is the Dubari Elephant Training Camp where elephants are fed, sheltered and looked after. Located on the banks of the Kaveri River, it is indeed a site to go rafting and observe elephants that come to the river to bathe. These elephants are trained and are people friendly. Watching a baby elephant splash around and relax blissfully while the trainer scrubbed it indulgently was indeed a lovely experience. Rafting through the calm waters of the Kaveri felt like being in the Amazon basin. There were trees and green patches in between the waters. Clumps of spider lilies bloomed along the edge of the river, giving it a beautiful natural look. The branches create a natural arch and it was lovely sailing beneath them. It was also a trip on which I could observe nature at close quarters. In our busy urban lifestyles, we have very little time to observe the tiny wonders of nature. The cool trip brought me closer to the sights, sounds and beauty of nature. Whether it was a butterfly sucking nectar from the vibrant cosmos flowers, a cricket basking in the sunshine, the leaf-like camouflage of a grasshopper or the tiny ladybird that caught my attention, I reveled in the slow pace of life with a childlike glee. Come night and I had the opportunity to watch the huge datura flowers also known as devil's trumpet, open up with their heady fragrance. I used to always wonder why the devil's trumpet flowers are always droopy and never bloom to their full potential and beauty. On one of the nights on the plantation, I was drawn to their sweet floral scent and was amazed to find them blooming in all their glory. The large blooms were open 
fully and looked like large pink and white trumpets that caught the smallest amount of light and were illuminated in the dark. I realized then that they are night bloomers and attract night time pollinators by spreading their fragrance. Indeed, there is a method and purpose to every tiny thing that happens in nature. I was struck by the amazing detail with which each event or action is planned and perfected by nature over thousands of years. Similarly, I noticed how mushrooms sprang up within a single night. I remember filming a wild orchid on a low-lying branch in the evening. The next morning, there was a clump of mushrooms that seemed to have sprung up overnight. I was again struck by how nature can leave you constantly amazed. How can such complex organisms grow to their full potential within a span of 12 hours? Whatever the underpinnings of this creation, I am awestruck by the rhythm with which each life form grows and proliferates on this earth. We are fortunate to be born on this beautiful planet and must conserve the beauty of its diversity so that our future generations can savour these wonders of nature. I had planned to film orchids up close, but it had rained heavily the previous night and the plantations as well as the trekking paths were infested with leeches. After a few started crawling onto our shoes, we gave up the idea and bolted back to safety. I had to drop my plans of filming more orchids. However, I took some shots of orchids near the Abbey Waterfalls, which provides a sunny yet humid environment for orchids. The waterfalls is beautiful with crystal clear waters and is framed with rocks and greenery which provide a great backdrop. I found some Silagini, Bulbophyllum and Dendrobium orchids growing freely on trees in the area. Unfortunately, I couldn't identify the species but that did not dim my excitement as I filmed some of the native orchids of the region. I would have loved to go on filming some from up close but lost out on the opportunity as too soon our holiday came to an end. But I did make myself a promise that I would go back one day better armed to explore and learn about the orchids growing in that region. Soon it was time to leave this beautiful place and return to the urban landscapes of Mumbai. Kurk is remarkable for its old world charm, unspoilt natural beauty friendly people and delicious cuisine. The people of Kurg are worshippers of nature and are fiercely protective about the unspoiled beauty of their sylvan surroundings. No wonder then that people from cities love visiting Kurg for the simplicity and beauty it offers. On this impression, I would like to end the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment or a suggestion. I always look forward to hearing from you. Do subscribe to the channel for regular updates on orchid care and related videos. Thank you once again.